talk about boobs mm -hmm. for a minute. Yes. I have serious boob in <laughs> Fiona. Yes. Holy moly. Um, I know. Look, I, I've concealed them. I, I, I really want you to get them out because you just said no. Trixie and I was trying to concentrate on what you were saying, but I couldn't. I know. Do you know what, Fabi? I've always, I mean, I developed early. So at 14, I'd we? always, I was like, okay. yeah, in about 11. year eight. Oh, really? Grade six. <gasps> I got boobs in grade six and oh, boy see, I... pinged my bra. Really? And I was like, kill me. You might as well kill me. It was no so way. embarrassing. It was awful. See, well, you developed earlier than I did, but I developed and exploded. Oh, so I okay. sort of went, I, you know, overnight I was a C cup right. as, as like a teenager. So I'd always sort of had, um, you know, uh, something going on there. Right. But since Trixie, it, it, I went up four cup sizes. Mm. To a J. I didn't, I didn't even know you could get a J. I didn't know you could get a J. <laughs> I love, I'm such a boob person because I don't have boobs. Like when my milk came in at the hospital, I turned around to Sam and I went, oh! and it's like, Whoa! like they looked like big fake bolt-ons. Wow. But I still only filled out an A cup. Really? With all my milk in. Wow. I, lo I love boobs. Sam sometimes has to say to me, you can't just touch random women's boobs. Really? Because I'll I'm, look and I'll go, they're beautiful. And you I'm have often face. touched mine over the years, so I did know that. But no, see, Katie, these are udders now. I love they're them. They're just, I mean, they're, they're very functional. They're very heavy, though. Yeah. And I'm getting sore back. Yeah, and no. I'd love a little massage. Maybe you'll give me one after this. Probably not. That's it. I didn't think you would. <laughs> um, but they, they, the funny thing is, I think when you have boobs, they're not a novelty. So you actually yeah. go over them quite quickly. And in fact, all my girlfriends who similarly have uh, an ample bosom mm. uh, are really don't over their, their boobs. Yeah. Don't want them. I thought of a, a reduction years ago. Yeah, right. Just because it was really uncomfortable. You know, I, I have all sorts of shoulder issues. Do just you from really? Yeah. Yeah, because I used to. There used to be girls in high school that would have big boobs, and they'd go <laughs> big boobs in high school, and then they'd have all back problems and stuff. And I'd envy the back problem, but maybe I shouldn't. No, you shouldn't, because yeah, I was. I've, I've been a double D for a long time, yeah. and to go to a, I thought that was bad enough. But Jay, at the moment, this is the the. It's like uh, you know, and they're heavy. See, yeah, that's the right. other thing. I've always had heavy boobs. I wouldn't mind if they were like balloon-like and bounced yeah, up here, yeah. but they're just oh, so but, heavy. But they're doing an amazing job. Trixie just is feeding so beautifully. Mm. You just because I think some women are so natural at breastfeeding. <laughs> I wasn't. I found it so hard. I persisted. Mm. But uh, five bouts of mastitis. Oh, that's so unfortunate. But you're just cruisy with it. Yeah, it just happened. And the funny thing is, I didn't think I would be good at it, and I didn't think I'd like it because I had quite sensitive nipples. Mm. And I remember thinking, oh, just a little person, you know, yeah, right. latching on, and, and that would be really uncomfortable. But she was put on my boob probably about 20 minutes after she was born. Right. And she knew what she was doing. I mean, she is amazing. She knew what she was doing, which was good because I didn't. And I've had no problem ever since. How amazing is that first feed? Like I remember that, I wonder if it was different for you though, because you did have a C-section, but they mm. put backs on me and he whizzled himself down to it. Oh, really? Like a little worm. <gasps> like they know where to go to find the milk. Really? No. Unbelievable. Trixie was literally just latched on. Yeah. <laughs> Her right. head was like, put there, <laughs> do your job. And she did it. <laughs> When you were coming up with her name, mm. you didn't decide for so long. I know. Really? Well, no, I did. You see, this that's a uh, well, it, I didn't announce the name and I had, wasn't really sure. See, I think even you came into the hospital the next yeah. day. I think that you did. I, I, I think I told you. You did. You told us. But yeah. you, I think it, it was almost beside your family the first person you said. Trixie. Yeah, like exactly. I remember you saying you, you like, came in and how, I wasn't 100% sure yet. No, but how vulnerable do you feel saying the name so, for the first time going, Ugh, I know. It? And the funny thing was the process of naming her, and I'd had lots of names I liked, and I, I settled on her name about two weeks before she was born. I thought, yep, I'm going to go with that. Right. And, and I loved it. Look, because I, I've, I'm Fiona Box, Fifi Box. Mm. I grew up as Fee, Fiona, Fifi, Boxy. You know, I've always had different monikers. So, yeah. And I've liked that. So I've liked at different stages of my life or to different people, I've had different names. Yeah, yeah. So, and look, she may not like that, but I've given her, you know, some options. So, because I love, I love the name Beatrix and mm. I loved Beatrix Box yes. because I like the B and the B and the X and the X. So, you know, I just like the way it looked, Beatrix Box. And then Belle is actually my granny's name. Beautiful. So I wanted yeah. her name in there. Um, and well, she's actually Isabella, but we, you know, she's always been known as Belle. So 
I thought Beatrix Bell Box, that's perfect. But I'd also had Trixie on a list. So I'd had a oh. list of names for years. You know when you're like, you just, yeah, you know, over the I've years, you too, just always yeah. go, mm, if I had a baby, these are the names I'd like to call them. Mm. So I've always loved Trixie. And I suddenly went, Beatrix, Trixie, I can do them both. Yes. Um, and then it was Trixie Bell. I just went, oh, this is just all too cute. So she can decide when she's in an yeah. age where she wants to settle on something. Trixie is so, such a cute name though when it suits her. You yeah, know? Like I she know. She just looks like a little Trixie. Oh, she is. She's just so cute. And that, that's what happened. So I decided to name her. And then on the afternoon um, that I was going, uh, so I'd had her and three hours later when Hamish and Andy rang and I was announcing on the show, on the radio that I had a baby, I just had this brain freeze where I suddenly went, I looked at her and I thought, is she a Trixie? I'm not sure. And I looked at mum and I said, mum, uh, is she a Trixie? And mum went, I don't think so. Oh no. So I went, just don't know. I'm going to say I don't know what her name is. Right. So I then went on the radio and said, she's got no name. She's got no name yet. And I spent the next two or three days just mulling it over. It. Did you have another it. name that you were going with or was it Trixie or nothing else really? It was known, it was Trixie or nothing else really. Oh. It was, it, there were a couple around but I didn't know and then I'd actually gone into, walked around a, the nursery and there were two other oh. babies with some of the names I was looking at. So I was oh. like, mm, well, I'm glad I didn't pick that, glad I didn't pick that. Yeah. And it was only, it was like, it was midnight of the, her second day of being alive that mm. I was in the nursery, she was screaming her head off and one of the midwives just said to me, oh, what's your baby called? And I just went, Trixie. And it just came out oh. without me even pausing. And yeah. I just went, that's it. That's it. That's her name. I wasn't named for a week. You? Really? Mm -mm. My Why? parents, and then they come up with Katie. Katie's, like, How we creative. all love Katie. Oh, but you are see, a Katie. It's so boring. I'm like, you don't spend a week <laughs> choosing a kid's name and come up with that. Well, what could you have been? What were oh, the other options? I don't options? know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. There probably wasn't any either. That, I don't know how you can go a whole pregnancy and, and then go, I don't have a I name. I know, but you sort of can't because I was putting it off for a long time because mm. I thought the onus on me to come up with a, a, a name for a human and they have Such to have that name for the rest of their life. Yeah. I, I did put it off for a long time. You know, my mum said to me if I was a boy, I was going to be Donovan. Yes, so mm, glad mm, you're a girl, girl. Very then. glad I'm a girl. <laughs> no offence to any Donovans <laughs> who are watching, but <laughs> I don't think there are any Donovans <laughs> watching. I think we can safely say that you are you are bringing up Trixie on your own with the help of yes. your family yeah. and, and friends and everything. Do you feel overwhelmed when you think I'm going to be a single mum? No, not really. Um, only because for me, this is you know I'm at a stage in my life where I feel like I've achieved all the things I set out to achieve. Mm. So I, you know, motherhood was a challenge that I'd always hoped would maybe come along one day, I'd looked forward to. Yeah. And it, for me, it's just, it's my soul. It's, it's what I'm- natural to you, isn't it? Well, it's it is, I just, I've always, yeah, I, I've always felt it would be very natural and I've always felt I, would, I am very maternal anyway. Mm. So for me, it's just the biggest, um, blessing. I always sound, yeah. it sounds so cheesy anytime I think about it, but it so. it really is that cheesy. Even hearing her now oh. cooing and, and getting restless in is the background. Is it making your boobs milk? They're getting sore, yes. But um, <laughs> no, I, I, for me, yeah, I don't, I don't really look at it that way. I, I definitely now, and she's only eight weeks old now, but I now have a whole new respect for single parents because mm. I um, I respected them anyway, and mm. I have a few friends that are single mums or single dads, and you know you, you see what they go through or the way they have to juggle and the way yeah. they have to, um, you know, their lives are consumed mm. and they are full time, um, you know, looking after a baby without necessarily that you know full time support with them. Yeah. So I, I I I now go wow to do it to be able to do it is 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 a huge challenge and it, it's pretty massive it is massive but I also think you've got to build your village you know you do because I well I do have a partner but we ship him off every chance <laughs> we get you know I think oh my god I do have a village and you need to use those people yeah. and they get so much there's only so much you can give them they you know I think it's important to have so many people around and you've got a beautiful family that are always yeah there with you that she's going to it's it's different, I it think. It is. You know, you need those people around you and, and everyone to raise your kid with you. Well, it's so true. And the funny thing is because so many of my, you know, friends, you included, and my, my family, they've all just, they keep putting their hand up, you know, what can we do, what can we do, you know, how can I help? 
And at first I remember thinking, guys, I've got this covered. I'm mm. sorted. Thanks anyway. But then you suddenly realise, whoa, no, yeah. I really, you know, if you've got a day or a night where, you know, your baby's unsettled yeah. and you've just you've got no one to pass her to just to get, you know, a few minutes of relief. Yeah, um, to have that shower. Yeah, just to do, I know. I mean, at the moment, I, I barely, I shower, if I get a shower in before midday, that's a good day. Oh, that's a great day. Isn't that a great day? Yeah. But it's one of those things where, you know, if I want to eat, I'm starving, I'm ravenous and I want, want to make dinner, but she's yeah. going off her head. I, I can't put her down. Yeah. I don't know what to do. And then I just don't, I go without dinner. So, you know, you can see, you know, and I'm so lucky to have, as you said, that village and the family mm. and friends around me. But I really feel for single parents that don't because yeah. I can't, um, I can't fathom what that would be like to, to, to have no support. So I'm very lucky to have yeah. that support. When <laughs> your career started out in country radio, yes. you went and did the stints out you know, you did your hard yards. I think sometimes people look and go, oh, she's there, but they don't realise everything that you did. And it was a pretty long road, really, to get where you are. Mm. You've had huge success, but you have worked really hard to get there. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, it, and it's, it is, it's weird hearing from somebody else that it was hard work, because for me, it was just what I just had did to it. do and I wanted yeah. to do. So, um, and, and I, you know, I'm a big believer in that. If you're passionate about something, you want to work that hard. Do you, do yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. not, it doesn't seem like a toil, but yeah, I, uh, you know, the country, the few years in country radio, um, and you know, I was really young, so I'm fresh out of school and, yeah. you know, I've done bits and pieces at uni, but I just went and moved to the country and, and you know how close I am to my family, so that, mm. that was a bit tough. Um, but I loved the, you know, in country radio, there's a freedom um, because there's a lack of, um, Everything uh, resources. They're, they're, so you end up multitasking. Yeah, so at one but stage you I was. So much. Well, you do because I was mm. writing the commercial ads, copywriter. Oh. I was, um, you know, promotions manager, driving the the Ferosa around the town, giving away, you know, icy cold cans of Coke. Um, and then I was doing mid dawn shifts. So you'd be working, you know, from midnight till six a.m. You know, playing uh, oh songs and and barely talking because that was what I liked to do most. Mm, uh, but yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> but but as a music Music jock, you don't get a chance to do that. No. So that, you know, those years are a bit tough. And then, uh, and then, obviously, I've, I've just had doors open. And yeah. you know, there has it's been a case of a few steps forward. You know, two steps forward, six steps back. Yeah. Because and because you did get then picked up by um, a metro. Like you moved to Melbourne and did nights and stuff. And then that, then that fell through, and you went to producing and stuff. Do you did you ever have times where you're like? shit, am I doing the right thing here? Is this for me? Or did you just back yourself the whole time? I think I just backed myself. And not only backed myself, I just went with it. Yeah. I, 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 for me, life, you know, it does exist in the now. And I think, you know, forward planning is important. And mm. it's important to, you know, definitely see where you want to be and have dreams. But I've just always loved what I was doing at the time. Mm. And, and times when I didn't, so times when maybe, as you said, I, I you know, had a shift at one stage. I was working in Sydney doing a late night show on the Triple M network and then that got finished, that got cancelled. So then I was like, oh, what am I going to do? So I went into producing a bit. Mm. Um, and, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a very bad producer. Mm. So I'm not very organised. I don't think if you want to perform, you can be a producer. <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I like, you can't. There's no way. I know. So I struggled with that a bit. And maybe at that time I went, mm, is this what I want to do? Yeah. Uh, but I did believe I could find my way back onto the microphone, even if I just went and, like, you know, stole it and took it yes. home at night and did, did a show in my room. Because <laughs> you did, you know, you, you've been on a couple of shows and I think sometimes you can be put in teams where it doesn't really work for you and it can be really challenging and you've got to make it sound like you get along well. And it's surprising how many radio shows are actually slapped together yeah. and say, make magic. <laughs> and it's, it's really hard. It's oh, almost absolutely. impossible to do. The team that you're in now, though, you've said unlike any team that you've ever worked in. Yeah. What do you, how do you feel with with the show that you're doing now? Well, I mean, it's all, if you're working with people you love mm. and you respect, it I makes mean, such a difference. doesn't it? And, yeah. and what a great life you have because, mm. you know, you, for me, working with Jules and with Byron and our off-air team who aren't on air, mm. we're all so close. And for me, when you've got that mutual respect, a genuine love mm. for the people you're working with, and, um, and I love them, and Byron and Jules have been so supportive of me 
and um, and they've been such great friends. Yeah. But we also, with that healthy respect, you don't, you know, you you can be honest. You you know that you're not going to suffer if you're honest. I mean, if you're yeah. in teams that you think, gosh. I'm gonna to have to tell this person how I feel, yeah. and they hold it against you for the rest of your career. You think, well, what was the, the point? point? Because yeah. you know, yeah. being on air and, and in radio, you need chemistry, and that needs to be natural. And it's such a strange creative environment. You know, mm. there's not many places that you put in a room and you throw out ideas that you think are good, and then somebody go, no, nah, don't like that. And you just got to let it go. Yeah. Like you need to trust the people that you were with. Yeah, absolutely. To get anywhere. Exactly. Trust. I mean, and I think that's. You know, key across all you know um, occupations in the workforce. If you can trust people in your mm. team, um, then you're going to be successful. Yeah. Is radio your? Because you left radio for a while and did breakfast television. Mm. Is radio your number one? Do you think? Ra radio is like my baby. Yeah. Uh, along with that baby over there. <laughs> but radio is my past. It's where I started. It's where I feel really comfortable. Yeah. Um, I love TV and that and breaking out for a few years and doing, you know, solely TV, although mm. I kept doing a radio show on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, it couldn't get enough work. That was back in the days yeah. when work was paramount and key and I had no life. But yeah, a TV is an exciting medium too. So I do mm. really enjoy that. And I, uh, apart from the need to get your hair and makeup done constantly, which is tedious, because um, really you've got to get out of bed three hours earlier. I know. <laughs> what is it? Because you did um, the weather on yep. Sunrise for a while. What's the reality of breakfast television? Mm. I just can't imagine it's glamorous at all. Well, it's not. And I'm not taking it for granted because it's a brilliant job and, mm. and it's great fun and, and lo lots of people would love to do it. But, you know, you are getting up at 3 a.m. You've got to get into the makeup chair. You're in there, makeup chair for an hour, an hour and a half. Um, then you've got to, you know, look presentable. Yeah. You've got to keep that up. You've got, and you've got to have high energy. Yeah. So often by the time the cameras start rolling at 6 a.m., you're exhausted because you've been up for three hours in the middle of what seems like the middle of the night. Yeah. So, you know, but look, if you love it, um, you know, you're prepared to do it. I mean, every job has things that are maybe not as glamorous and the bits that you don't like, but you do it because you love it. Yeah, right. Because you hadn't done a huge amount of tally before you took on that role. No, no. I'd done, thank God you're here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because I look at people that do that show and I'm like, that's my worst nightmare getting up there and just trying to do that. Yeah. You were really good at it. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. I remember the first time I'm like, that's Fifi, what the hell? <laughs> like, you just rolled with it. Well, rolling, we'll see that. It, it sort of tapped into one of my strengths, which is just bluffing my way through life. Mm. So on a show where you just essentially bluff your way through it, yeah, that was going to yeah. work to some degree. But no, I was terrible at it. And then and Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, once again, terrible at it. And probably only went as far as I did to the grand final through sympathy. <laughs> well, you made it to the grand final. I, I love that you have to slip I that did, in there. I did, <laughs> You did, did you break your ankle doing that? Or? No, I twisted it and it was a, it was a nasty... I, I ended up having an MRI scan. We did, I couldn't really walk on it for a few weeks, but I don't. fortunately I have bones that don't break because I've right. never had a break, despite Don't the you? fact that... I know everyone seems to think I've had all these injuries. You broke a toe not long ago. Did you break no, a I didn't toe? No, I didn't break it, no. Oh. Did I? Did... Maybe when you didn't break that? it. Didn't you do something with your toe when you were pregnant with Trixie and you ended up in Oh, hospital? yes. No, yeah, didn't break. Just sprain them. Sprain my oh. toe. Everything just sprains or twists or gets swollen but doesn't actually break. Because it's not a, just an act that you're quite accident prone. No, it's not. Let's list yeah, but off. can I say, yeah. I want to defend myself here. Okay. I don't often need to defend myself or want to. But on the accident prone one, I am going to. Okay. But I put it down to, I just... I, I throw myself at things. Like, I could be quite safe and, and you know, not necessarily put myself out there. Yeah. And I wouldn't injure myself. But I seem to go, yeah, okay, yeah, bungee jump off a, off a bridge. Why not? Do it. Hurt myself. So, you How know, did you break your toe? Okay, I fainted getting a massage. So, okay, <laughs> so, I'm accident So from. wild. <laughs> Coming, when you are known, you know, when you've got a profile, you get a lot of love, but you can also get a lot of criticism. What do you, how do you, when you read things about you that you don't like or aren't true, what do you do to help make it not affect you? 
Oh, look, I, I, I think it's, it's natural now for, for it not to affect me, but I think early on, I mean, like anyone, you know, I think back to school when, you know, I'd find out somebody had been, you know, talking about me behind my back mm. or didn't like me, and it's like a dagger to the heart. Yeah. You just go, oh, why don't they like me? What did I do? And then when you, you know, it's, it's amplified when you're in the media. Yeah. And, you know, and I remember when I started in radio and I accidentally happened upon, there was an article in the paper, and then, of course, sometimes online, Mm. and they had all the comments below oh, yeah. and a friend of mine had printed me the article from the, <laughs> the computer but they they'd kept all the comments oh. and I remember sitting there and there were like 10 pages just of hate me you know shouldn't be on the radio no talent I can't stand her voice and I just for days I was just in this yeah. this days of oh, all that vitriol and that hate and what did I do to these people? Yeah. Why don't they like me? And they don't even know you. But I have such know. Strong opinions. You do, yeah. and you know I tend to think I'm a nice, well-meaning person, and I don't mm. like to hurt people or upset them. So why are people doing that to me? Yeah. And, and mind you, that was probably in my first year of having a public profile. Right. And you know now, quite a few years later, it, it just, you build a really thick skin, you have to, and you, you you have to. And you have to know, and this is doesn't. This isn't just specific to people with public profiles. Mm. Just in life, not everyone's going to like you, no. and not everyone's going to warm to you. And you know what? That's fine. That somebody else's opinion um, of me is their business. It's actually yeah. none of my business. No. And they're more than welcome to it. And I, you know, and, and I, I've gotten to a stage now where I don't even have bad feelings for people. You know, if yeah. I've, if I read something or someone's written something about me, and I think, oh, that wasn't the best. Um, I don't hate them. I just no. shrug my shoulders and think, you know, what matters in life? And we all know it's the people that love you, yes. your friends, your family, and you just have to let everything else go. Mm -hmm. Because if you focus on it and, and you know, and you think about bullying and, you know, yeah. we now look at bullying as an epidemic, even though it's been around forever. Yeah. Um, I think the same applies. It's reinforcing the good in your life mm. and ignoring the bad. I know. Which can be tricky too, though, when you're having a bad day. Because you're oh, human yeah. that, you know, you do have feelings. Absolutely. And stuff. Just sometimes that viciousness. And I don't have anywhere near the profile that you have but it's still amazing that people will find you and send you a you know oh, yeah. and you've got to take in the, the <laughs> you know you might get a beautiful comment but you look over that go that's nice and then you go straight for the negative and oh, go, why absolutely. do they think that about me but you're right you've got to just take it with a grain of salt Oh, and I go, so you know what, true. if you spent a minute with me, you'd go, you'd know I'm normal and yeah. you'd like me. And you know that about those people. You know, when I've read nasty comments about me, I've just thought, well, I, I know that that is a person sitting there in their lounge room yeah. on their iPad, you know, they've got one eye on the telly, one eye down here, I hate her, you know, she's pathetic. I don't think they really think that about no. me. I think if they met me, they probably, you know, you'd hope they wouldn't if yeah. they did sit down with me. But... Look, even if they didn't, it, it's it's really it's so important in life to not take um, what other people say about yeah. you as gospel because it's not. It's just someone's opinion, mm. and uh, and you've got to let it go. And and like you said, it is really hard sometimes, and you yeah. can focus on, on on something nasty or terrible that's been said about you. But you know, this is your life. You get one shot at it. Are you going to focus on being happy, or are you going to focus yeah. on things that are negative? And and that applies to everything in your life. You know, sometimes things don't work out the way you want them yeah. to, um, and you have you get to decide how you interpret information, and you're either going to interpret it positively or let it drag you down. Yeah. What about when you see things written in magazines that have almost look like they're exclusives, but you yeah. know it's complete bullshit? Yeah. Does that make your blood boil, or do you go? Oh. I, I now, it's, it's water for ducks back now, yeah. but it, it hasn't always it's been. It's so strange it? though. I would find it so strange to read something and go, there's That's not true. nothing <laughs> true about this. I know. Yeah, that is it, is, it is difficult because you have this, your initial instinct is to set the record straight. Yeah. So you think that's clearly not true. Mm. And everyone in my life knows that's not true. Yeah. But now, you know, for the 90% of people who are reading that, they're believing it. Yeah. But then look, I, I tend to think, I hope that people read things and they're now aware that what they're reading is more often than not fictional. Yeah. So, um, but look, even if they're not, once again, it does tie back to, it, it's, it's, if, it, if it isn't true and you know it's not true and, and the people in your life that you care about know it's not true, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what other yeah. people think. Yeah. I think reputation, particularly when you know, you're young um, and I think you know, in your teenage years and particularly even in my 20s, I was very concerned about reputation mm. and how will that look if I do that or if I say that. 
Um, but you, you start to realise, really, your reputation is, is other people's uh, perspective of you yeah. or their opinion of you. And it's not real. No, it's not real. So I think no. if you can focus on that. And so it's dangerous, I guess, to get caught up in that. The ego side worrying, you know. Absolutely. Just bring you undone. Well, it does. And, yeah. I, and I think, you know, um, for me, you, uh, yes, I, I realise I, I have a public profile, but I also have a private life. Mm. And, um, and I like to keep my private life private. Now, I, by the nature of my job and, and the way I am, yeah, mm. I talk a lot and I let things slip and I happily talk about certain things. But I think everyone has the right to have or keep what they want private, private. Yeah. And that doesn't even just apply to people with public figures. I mean, mm. you know, in any job, I mean, very rarely does someone walk into, you know, an office situation and go, guys, just to let you know, <laughs> this is what I'm going through. <laughs> Everyone has a private life. <laughs> But when you've got a public profile, everyone seems to know yeah. what you're going through. But yeah. And feel sometimes the right that they, <laughs> that they have that right to feel, like, mm. you know, know what you're going through. Yeah, exactly. It is. And, and I'm really lucky and, and I'm so grateful to have so, so much wonderful support out there because, you know, listeners of the radio show and, and people who have supported me through my career who I've never met. Yeah. Um, I just get so, uh, you know, if something's written about me and, and I know it's not true and I think, it, you know, it can be quite hurtful. Um, when you get sort of people making contact or writing me emails mm. or saying, hey, read that, that was really awful, um, you know, but just letting you know we're thinking of you or something, you think, yeah. oh gosh, that's just so lovely because really you don't know people. me. Yeah. And um, and so I've had one wonderful support all through my career by, by great people. So. Yeah.